All right, so last week I showed you how to choose a soldering iron. This week I'm going to show you how to solder. Um, the goal of this series is to learn how to solder well so you can build kits and also hopefully wire your own home recording studio. First, I'm going to show you tools that you need for soldering. Wire strippers. I like these wire strippers that are sort of continuously adjustable. I've developed a feel for them so I can strip pretty much any size wire. Uh, they do require that you develop a little bit of a feel. If you'll notice, I have two fingers on the outside and two fingers on the inside. And that's so I can very carefully adjust them as I'm cutting through the insulation and not cut through the wire. So they can be a little tricky to use when you're starting out. And so for that reason, I would recommend that maybe you try these. These have preset slots for the different sizes of wire. Uh, the one thing is these will not be able to cut the big outside jacket on a wire, so you're going to need some single-edge razor blades. If you're wiring connectors, a bench vise is really handy. Um, I've had this pan of ice for years, as you can see, it's beat to heck. But you need something to hold the hot connector while you're working, and you need your hands to be free. There are copies of this online on Banggood and eBay and Amazon. I don't know how good they are, but it's, it's, you know, it's not a very complex piece. If you don't want to spend the money right now on a vise, uh, what you can do is just wrap a rubber band around a pair of pliers. And uh, that, you know, that doesn't do too bad if you're only doing a few connectors. That does the job. Flush cutters, diagonal cutters, I call them nippies. Uh, definitely needed for circuit board work, and I also like to use them to clean up the ends of wires when I'm soldering connectors. Safety glasses. Now, before you call me a snowflake, I've seen two guys go to the hospital because of this. Molten solder splattered into their eyes. So I suggest anybody starting out, especially when you're doing wiring, to wear glasses when soldering. An exhaust fan or fume extraction. Now, I've soldered most of my life without using one of these. Recently, though, I have found some YouTube videos that explains what chemicals are released from the flux when you're soldering, and it's not healthy stuff. Um, so if you could afford it, I would recommend buying one of these. I use this. I'm not sure how good the filter is, but at least it pulls the fumes away from my nose and there are more sophisticated extraction systems. But I also do think it's probably a wise idea and I'm going to be doing it from now on. Solder. Now be careful when you're buying solder. There's solder for stained glass, there's solder for plumbing, and you want to be sure that you get solder for electronics. I like the, the thin type, and it should be a flux core solder. Now, what flux core is, in the center of this solder wire, there's actually a, a filling. Think of it as kind of like a chocolate eclair. It's a chemical called flux, and what flux does is it helps the two metals bond. The two main types of solder that you're going to run into are either lead solder or lead free solder. Lead solder, to be honest, it flows easier, it's easier to work with, it melts at a lower temperature. If you're working on old vintage gear, you should use lead solder because the circuit board may not stand up to the higher temperatures required of the lead free. But it is very bad for the environment because the electronics thrown into landfill leach lead out. So they've come up with mandates to require everybody to switch to lead-free solder. Lead-free solder, it's fine. It's a bit more of a pain in the neck to work with. It doesn't flow as easily. It doesn't wet as easily. Um, I say you let both your conscience and your local laws be the guide as to which type of solder you use. Obviously, they both work fine. Okay, we're almost ready to solder something. Now, the first thing I want you to notice is the tip on this iron is nice and shiny. And what th that is what's called tinned. It's got, it's got a coat of solder on it already. Now, this day and age, most tips come pre-tinned. So it's not something you have to worry about, but your tip should be shiny with solder. Clean the tip before you solder something so it's nice and sharp like that. 
And when it comes to temperature, here's what you've got to balance between. If the temperature is too high, the soldering iron pretty quickly can either damage a component, damage the circuit board, or damage a connector by possibly melting some of the plastic. That's not good. So you want to start as low as possible with the temperature, but if the temperature is too low, what's going to happen is you're going to have to heat that joint for too long. And the amount of time that you spend with the iron waiting for the solder to melt is going to actually overheat the component as well. So if the temperature is too low, you risk overheating the circuit board or the component. And if the temperature is too high, so the first thing you want to look for is when you touch the solder to the iron, you know, it should melt pretty easily. There should be no resistance. That's good. Um, I'm using lead solder. So my temperature setting right now is about 550, which I think is going to probably work pretty well. I would start low in the low 500s and see how it works. And if you have any difficulty soldering the joint, Bring the temperature, creep the temperature up until it works pretty smoothly and quickly. Um, lead free solder, uh, I would start about 600. You might try to start a little bit lower, but it's really going to depend on your iron. Um, my rule of thumb is this if it takes me more than three seconds, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, maybe four, to solder a joint, I stop because it's going to get overheated. So I use that as my rule of thumb to see if the temperature is correct. If I can make that joint in like four seconds, great. Another thing about that's annoying about the temperature being too high is if you get the solder really hot, it will take it a while to cool down. And if you're holding a wire while you're soldering it, it's going to start to sort of burn your fingertips. Or what can happen that's pretty annoying on a circuit board is the component can wiggle while the solder is still liquid and it won't form a good joint. Now, the rule of thumb with soldering that you'll see everywhere is you heat the work and apply the solder to the work, not the iron. Um, that's true and that's safe and that's good. But I have a slightly different take on that. What I like to do is I like to apply the iron to the work and then I like to place the solder where the work meets the iron, uh, sort of at that junction. And I find it enables me to do a good solder joint a little bit quicker and uh, doing it quickly is good because you don't want to overheat or damage something. I'm going to solder a couple of these resistors on this circuit board. Uh, again, the cutters are handy for cutting. I like to cut off the ends that have the little bit of masking tape glue on them. Bend the leads. Push that in nice and flat. What I like to do is to just slightly bend the leads out so that uh, the component doesn't move around or fall out. But I don't like to bend them flat because if you make a mistake, they're impossible to desolder when you do that. Heat the work and the, and the lead and then apply the solder where the work and the lead touch. Doesn't take a lot. You shouldn't have globs of solder. And the surfaces should be wet and there should be a nice transition. And then take your cutters and clip off the excess. Okay. That's a pretty good job. Nice, shiny, smooth joints. What you want to see is a very smooth, shiny joint. The solder should transition from the circuit board and to the wire smoothly. If you see a, a blob like this, or if you see uh, 
that the solder is sort of cloudy looking. That's something called a cold solder joint. And what that means is one of two things. Either you did not heat the work enough and you melted the solder on the iron so that the, the work did not get hot enough for the solder to adhere to. Or in some cases, especially if you're working on old gear, you have corroded wires or connections or circuit boards and the oxidation does not allow the solder to adhere. So it should always be shiny, it should always be smooth and make a nice transition between the wire and the circuit board. Well, that's it for this week's lesson. It ran a little bit long, so I didn't get to audio connector wiring, but I'll start that on the next episode. If you enjoyed this and would like to see more, please support me on Patreon. There's a link below, and there are links also for all the tools you saw in this video. Thanks. See you next time.